what's up beautiful people it's indaroma welcome to the channel today we have this very interesting video and it's titled why israelis and palestinians both claim jerusalem hmm awesome i'm excited to check this one out let's check it out it is time to officially recognize jerusalem as the capital of israel the u.s has officially moved its embassy in israel from tel aviv to jerusalem and in doing so, President Trump has reversed decades of consensus about the city's status. While Israeli leaders celebrated, Palestinians denounced the move, deepening divides between two sides of a conflict that's 70 years old. We're hearing live fire. Rising death toll. Quite a juxtaposition. Here are five things to know about Jerusalem and why it's so contentious. Both Israelis and Palestinians consider Jerusalem their capital. Israel has controlled West Jerusalem since 1949. During the Six-Day War, Israel captured East Jerusalem and annexed that half of the city. But the international community considers East Jerusalem occupied territory, whose fate needs to be part of a negotiated deal between Israel and the Palestinians. In 1980, after Israel passed a law declaring a united Jerusalem their capital, the United Nations condemned the annexation. Palestinians want to divide the city and make East Jerusalem the capital of a future Palestinian state, while Israelis want to unify Jerusalem to be their capital. Jerusalem is central to the peace process. During peace process negotiations for the Oslo Accords, the issue of Jerusalem was initially set aside to avoid derailing the talks. Any successful peace initiative in the future would likely need to resolve the conflicting claims to the land. Violence is not new in the Holy City. Control of Jerusalem has been a trigger for violence many times in the past. The contested area of East Jerusalem is home to some of the holiest sites in the world for Jews and Muslims. It is the site where Judaism's two sacred temples once stood and the site where the Prophet Muhammad ascended to heaven. The trouble is that the sites for Muslims and Jews exist on the same land. There's a precarious power share in place. Israeli officials control who has access to the complex, but Muslims have religious control inside. Jews can enter, but aren't allowed to pray. Instead, they use the Western Wall. The Second Intifada began in 2000, when then opposition leader Ariel Sharon visited the Temple Mount to assert Israel's right to the complex. Palestinians protested and were met with tear gas and rubber bullets. The violence lasted five years and killed over 3,000 Palestinians and nearly 1,000 Israelis, with thousands more wounded. The U.S. isn't the only country moving its embassy. In the early 70s, 16 countries had embassies in Jerusalem, including the Netherlands and Colombia. But after the UN Security Council condemned the annexation of East Jerusalem in 1980, member states left. Then, Trump signaled a change in policy, and Guatemala and Paraguay also announced they are moving their embassies to Jerusalem. And it's possible that more countries will follow America's lead. The U.S. has avoided the embassy move for decades. Though Congress passed a law to relocate the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem more than 20 years ago, the law includes a loophole that allows the president to delay the relocation for the sake of national security. Every sitting president, Clinton, Bush, Obama, has used this power and signed the waiver every six months. President Trump signed the waiver in June 2017 and again in December 2017, but also signaled he would begin the process of moving the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. And in May of 2018, he carried out his pledge. The embassy move came at an already tense time. Tens of thousands of Palestinians have spent the past few weeks holding protests on the border between Gaza and Israel that weren't tied to the embassy move. Dozens of Palestinians have been killed even before the embassy opened. While President Trump was careful not to call Jerusalem an undivided capital, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said just that at the U.S. Embassy opening. And God bless Jerusalem, the eternal undivided capital of Israel. But opposition to Trump's declarations and the embassy move has been growing. And as lines are drawn and the fight for Jerusalem intensifies, the future of Israeli-Palestinian stability is once again at risk. Wow. 
I mean, they should just say, since there is a wall that is built in Jerusalem, it should just stay that way. Because, honestly, I'm Christian and I'm always going to take Israel's side. That's always going to be the truth because my mom, my mom has visited um, Jerusalem and many Christians I know have visited Jerusalem, Israel and it's a holy city, the holy land and they have beautiful memories there and everything and if it's come to a divide for um, Israel to own one part of the land and Palestine to own one part of the land then so be it, it should be that way because if that is not done and like everybody uh, mark their territory it's always going to rain conflict and honestly I just don't know and if Trump has um, declared Jerusalem to be Israel's capital, I mean, I mean that is even what I know. I know Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, even growing up, even till now. Like this is actually my first time hearing that um, um, Palestine and Israel are sharing Jerusalem as their capital. Honestly, <sighs> this this right here. If we continue talking about this, it's not going to end because, I mean, this is what they've been living as um, having conflicts, uh, like, continuously. I don't know to what end this is going to be. I pray that the conflict comes to an end soon so people live their, live their normal life and um, they come on a common ground to the divide out of the land. If that's going to be the solution to peace in the place, then let it be because this is affecting so many people so many lives and so many people both those who are somewhat connected or related to jerusalem and those that are not related to it is affecting lots of people but honestly um i really love your honest contribution on this what are your thoughts about this what are your thoughts about jerusalem and um, the ongoing conflict between israel and I really love your honest contribution. I mean, the fact that I am being biased and I'm, I'm choosing uh, to support Israel doesn't make it that someone who is also going to choose the opposite side, we are going to have conflict. We can always come on a common ground to share our opinions and disagree, but still learn from each other without having conflict and the lies and also respect everybody's opinion especially regarding subject matters like this and i believe that i have amazing audience that are going to be watching me that also would respect each everyone's opinion regarding subject matters like this and, oh, and i'm also looking forward to reading from you you can share other useful information you think might be really helpful and until next time see you in the next video